All right, welcome everyone. My name is Jillian Cordial. I use she, her pronouns. I am the program manager for Carillon Communities. Thank you so much for joining us. This session is being recorded um, and this is the Once in Future Planet faculty webinar. We're also joined by Dr. Abigail McEwen, who is our faculty director for Carillon. And with that, I will pass it off to one of our amazing professors. Thank you and welcome everyone. I'm James Farquhar. Um, I think we can continue on to the introductory slide. Um, my, I, my pronouns are uh, he, him, and his, and my email is jfarquhar at umd.edu. I'm a professor in the Department of Geology. I'm also chair of geology, and I'm a member of the Earth Systems Interdisciplinary uh, Science Center. Um, and I think we go to the next one. I've been, I've been at Maryland for actually over 20 years as a faculty member, but I've been associated with Maryland for a lot longer than that. I grew up in the area, uh, walked on campus as a kid. Uh, my kids went to Maryland, my dad taught here. Um, what I can tell you is it's, it's a really wonderful place. I found it really exciting. And, and I think one of the best things is um, at least from the standpoint of a faculty member or the students that we have here. Um, go to the next slide. Um, I'm a member of the Department of Geology and I've worked on a variety of different questions ranging from Martian meteorites to the moon to deep earth questions to sort of evolution and um, metabolic function of bacteria that live in sediments and mud and metabolize minerals. And I'm probably best known for work that shows when Earth's atmosphere became oxygen rich or really when the modern atmosphere formed. I, I figured out a way to, um, to track that and, and it has been a lot of fun doing that. I love geology and I love getting outside. I think we go to the next slide. Um, a few years ago, I switched topics. Uh, really from the rocks and um, meteorites types of topics to environmental questions. And the questions I became interested in are related to one of the greenhouse gases, methane, that you might have heard about in the news. And the reason I'm interested in it is because it's an important greenhouse gas for warming, and it probably is one of the best targets we have for slowing climate change in the near term. Uh, the people I work with are working on things like wetlands, which you see a picture here of the wetland near Jug Bay, just outside of campus. Uh, landfills, cities, cars, sewer systems, um, fugitive natural gas, even methane trapped in snow in places like Greenland. We're analyzing some samples from the, from the, from the atmosphere that's trapped in Greenland snow right now. And I, and I find it really exciting, and I love to talk about it. Um, I think we go to the next, next slide. Um, and uh, to do this work, I use state-of-the-art instrumentation. And we're lucky at University of Maryland, and you can see the image of it here, to have one of two instruments in North America like this one. Um, this instrument ionizes methane. It, it puts, makes it charged in the, in there's a little inset in the image below to the left. And then it accelerates it in a 16,000 volt uh, potential field to a velocity of almost a million miles an hour. So it's, it's cooking along through the instrument. And what it does is it allows it to separate out different types of methane um, and to understand where, where the methane comes from. We will, we will visit the instrument in class and, and we also will use it for one of the class projects. Um, so let me go to the next slide and I'll tell you a little bit about Once in Future Planet. Um, the question is a Carillon course. It focuses on a big, big question. And our question is, how does understanding Earth's past help us plan for the future? And we do this through a combination of different activities and we look for connections. Um, we will start with formation of the un universe, formation of the solar system, formation of the planets, and then work our way through the formation of our own world and its own evolution. And then we'll end at the end of the term with the world today, 
looking at as a theme what the connections are between living things and the environment and changes in the environment. And what I what my goal is largely to have you take away skills from the class and take away knowledge from the class that will help you in your future classes at Maryland, but also that will allow you to enjoy learning things beyond Maryland, because these are topics that most likely are not in your major, um, but they're topics that you're going to find that you enjoy knowing about later in conversations and knowing things like that. Another part of the class, and this is on the next slide, is um, a uh, team research experience working with some aspect of methane and developing reports where we learn about methane along the way. Um, we will collect data. We'll use instruments, uh, sm some small portable instruments. I'm hoping to build some small sensors that we can deploy. To, to make automated methane measurements. And we will generate data, we will generate new knowledge because you're going to figure out how to work with it. And then you will um, put together reports, we'll work with you to put together the reports and presentations. And what you see here are a series of um, posters that were presented in the Carillon Open House last fall. Um, one of them actually is, Kelly is involved in, who, who will talk next. And um, I just, I, I want, I'm going to wrap up here and say I'll be happy to answer questions um, after, the, after the presentation, um, but the next, next person is going to be Kelly, who will, who will talk about her experiences. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm an undergrad. It's my second semester at UMD, um, and I'm in Letters and Sciences. And I am, or was, a Once in Future Planet student. Um, so how I kind of got into Once in Future Planet, when I kind of applied to UMD, I matched with Once in Future Planet based on the interest that I put on my form, things like astronomy, learning about the Earth around me, climate change, etc. cetera. Um, and one of my most memorable moments from the class, we took a sort of like nature walk uh, we went outside and we went across campus, so it was really cool to me because I was still very new to campus and it helped me kind of see and experience different things around me. So we went across the campus farm, um, we went across the bridge, we went to a creek and I saw a butterfly there, but it was pretty cool and it was nice to kind of see the different parts of campus and apply what we were learning about methane specifically to the outside world in a kind of like field work environment. Um, and then one of my biggest takeaways from the class is that there's kind of like many ways to look at the world around you and to kind of read different things in order to see the history of the earth and what it has to say about its future and other things. Um, and overall, I would say that being in Carillon and in Once and Future Planet, it was an enriching experience. Um, it helped me to learn about different processes affecting the Earth in terms of once and future planet, specifically with like climate change um, and methane's role in that. Um, and in terms of Carolina as a whole, the staff, like all the admin, the teachers, even the students, they're all very reliable. Um, and they were able to answer any questions that I had and provided help when I needed it, whether it was inside class or outside of class, they were very helpful to me and they still are. And they helped me to feel more comfortable and more part of a community at UMD. Thank you to you both. Uh, so now we will go ahead and move into our Q&A uh, portion of the session. So feel free to go ahead and ask some questions. We will be monitoring the Q&A box um, and we will, we will get to your questions as they come in. So go ahead, start typing away.
Additionally, I do want to note um, that if you have questions that are Carillon um, specific, we will have someone who probably types an answer to you. Um, so if you have any questions about room selection or deadlines, uh, we will type the answer to you. However, I really encourage you all to use this time to ask questions to Dr. Farquhar and then also Kelly, um, because we have this, this time for you all to chat with them. So Jillian, I see a, a question asking about types of research um, besides the effect of methane that um, that that we will that that we will study. So I think I guess what I would say is we use the methane project as the main project around which we work together as a group and as a team. Um, however, it's more than just say focusing on methane. There are questions or there are issues associated with how research is done that we work on. We do work on how to um, try to develop and present research. Um, with the class itself, we will explore a whole variety of different topics. And, and I don't know if that's what the um, part of the question is. And, for those, we basically march through time from the Big Bang uh, through the and look at the geological research and the information about um, geological processes through time. We look at climate through time to, um, to, to try to understand um, what the controls are on climate in the past and how they have varied moving into the future. Um, I guess I see another question about trips outside of campus for Once in Future Planet. Um, at the beginning of term, we will do a trip along with all the other Carillon students, or we usually do, um, to visit museums. Um, we also have visited museums in the past as an outside of class activity. Um, the trips are mostly when during the week around campus. We haven't done any long field trips off of campus, but those are a possibility, I think, if, if time depending. Um, but we do a few trips around campus looking at different aspects of the environment around campus. Um, and if I can also add something, we did do a sort of like impromptu trip uh, during class. We wanted um, as a class to visit the geology department. Um, and we saw there were um, there was a display of like a whole bunch of rocks and crystals and minerals that we all really wanted to see. So Professor Farquhar allowed us to go and kind of see it. So it was really cool. We just got to walk around and see all the different rocks and minerals and gems that, that they had on display. We could kind of ask questions and he would answer um, any questions that we had about that. Yeah, and I'm open to students in the class saying, hey, we would like to see something, and then we go and we try to figure out how to do that. There is the flexibility. I would also add that um, Carolina as a whole community does have off-campus events. Uh, so this past fall, we did a national zoo trip um, and we provided Metro cards um, to get there. And then we also took a trip to the DC downtown holiday market and the National Portrait Gallery. Um, and I know it's, it's the plan to continue doing fun events um, and taking trips and really helping you all explore um, DC, which is so close to us and a wonderful resource for learning. Actually, I'll add one more. Um, I know the Department of Geology has a geology club and they go on field trips and they, other people are can join those, those field trips if they like. And I'm trying to work that in to at least make people aware when those trips are occurring. Professor Farquhar, could you say some more about the welcome trip that you designed um, in August for students in Washington, DC? 
Sure, sure. So um, I guess after the students arrive, we have an ice cream social. And then the next day we go on a trip with, with all the different Carillon students, but the, each of the classes gets together and um, works on a project associated with one or more of the museums downtown. And so just to give an idea, last year, what we did was we first went to the Natural History Museum and it explored around the Natural History Museum to understand aspects of climate and aspects of geologic time that are present in the exhibits there. And we had a morning to wander around, look at the exhibits, um, try to record information, collect information, actually information that we used in class afterwards. And then, then we went out, we had lunch, and then the afternoon we went over to the National Gallery of Art, which um, may not sound like something that you would do as part of a class that's focused on, on um, earth science. But if you look at the art that is exhibited in museums like the National Gallery, you'll see that the, the artists describe the world around them in many cases. And so many of the paintings and many of the sculptures carry information about the environment and about climate that we could look at. So we sort of, we looked at that, we looked at some of my favorite paintings, and then pretty much everyone went, went off and explored and tried to find um, paintings that were some that they liked or, or art that they liked. And they could wander essentially anywhere they wanted and then come back and, and, and sh we shared it with the class. And then we came back to, to DC, to College Park from DC after that. Professor Farquhar, you also showed us some of the posters that students created for um, our showcase in December. Could you say a few more words about the team projects that students will complete over the course of the semester? Sure. Um, so we have we we have a real opportunity in at a campus like the University of Maryland, where you have scientific instrumentation that you can use, especially things that we can. Um, and as time moves forward, we get more and more of this instrumentation, especially instrumentation that we can essentially carry around with us around campus. So we have some methane detectors that we can use. We have different ways of collecting gas and of sort of uh, mapping out where methane is being released on campus and then trying to understand why it's being released. And so what we do is in the series of discussion sections, we treat those initially almost like, like labs, we go out and we make measurements, we collect data, and then we come back we look at the data, we go through the process of understanding the data and interpreting it, which is good if you're going to be um, taking science classes. And then we work on developing hypotheses and then on writing up an interpretation of what we think we see in the data. And there really are no right or wrong answers here. It's more about the, the thought process that I'm interested in in terms of how the interpretations are made. And so the students work as groups. Uh, they work in class and in discussion section with me and with the, with the TA of the class. And we basically, these posters are, represent, are, are the products of that work. Um, on the left, you can see there's a map with these um, hot spots on it, these red spots, those spots, the size of them is related to the amount of methane that's being released from various um, manhole covers around campus that was mapped out. Um, the, the poster in the middle goes through and describes some of the issues with, with methane production and um, how it, how, what, the, what the background is. And then the poster on the right-hand side sort of shows time series um, uh, records of methane. And that top plot, you'll see those two little bumps where methane goes up. Those are two little bumps in the sewer that basically are probably where most of the water is running. They're in the morning and in the evening. And it basically is sort of flushing things through the 
through the, the sewers and, and activating the, the methane and causing the release. So we learn about processes that happen in the world around us. And, and I guess I will add one more thing. I'm hoping this time to build a series of little Arduino-based sensors that we can deploy, we can build and deploy, and then upload the data off of them to get real-time real -time measurements. I wonder, Kelly, would you be willing to share a, a bit about your experience working um, as part of a team in Once and Future Planet? Sure. Um, so teamwork, I would say, is a major part or was the major part of being in Once and Future Planet. Um, like Professor Farquhar said, um, during our discussion sections, we would work very closely with our groups in order to do kind of many projects, many activities that would all kind of lead up, I guess, to the big project, but also they were separate in themselves. Um, so kind of how it was for me, we were separated into three main groups in my discussion. Um, my group was focused on rice and non-animal agriculture and kind of how that relates to methane production. So throughout the class in our discussion sections, we would get together with our groups and kind of work on a separate project that we would come and present having to do with how methane relates to our methane production based on our group and we would present those um and then in class we would sometimes like go out onto campus like we went out once to go and actually see different places of methane production all across campus and then we came back and then another class we actually went out and collected methane samples so they taught us how to use the kind of devices and we could find like a manhole, a sewer hole, and then we would use our devices to collect the methane samples and come and bring it back into class. And then using the samples that we actually got out in the field, we took the actual data um, and used it in our own projects. And you can actually see that data in our final projects that was on the slide before. The one in the middle was the one that me and my group worked on. Um, so we just kind of put all of our data together, all of the knowledge that we gathered throughout our entirety of the class. Um, yeah, if you can see my group specifically, we worked on waste methanogenesis. We actually made that diagram in the middle, kind of showing the process of methane um, in a sewer, um, kind of how that works. So we just took all the knowledge that we learned throughout the entirety of the class and just put it to use. So everything that you learn is useful and it will be used for something at some point. And even the uh, things that I learned throughout class, I've actually been able to apply them in some of my other classes. So I've taken like a geography class. Um, I'm taking one right now. And all of like the information that I've learned concerning like climate change and methane and its role has actually come in my other classes. So the information I would say is very versatile. Um, yeah, teamwork is a big part of it. Um, and it's fun. You get to kind of be close with your group. Um, and then you just work on projects that kind of all come together. Everything that you learn kind of has a purpose. Um, and you'll see that once you're in Once in Future Planet. I will also note that all of our I-Series courses, which are these community courses like Once in Future Planet, are general education requirements. Um, and Carolyn, we, we take an interdisciplinary approach. And so you can be in Once in Future Planet, uh, regardless of major, um, you could just be exploring something new, uh, but you could also be, you know, maybe a natural sciences major. That is, that is completely fine. Um, you're going to be able to learn a lot about the topic, uh, really work in, in great teams, um, and then also take some cool trips off of campus. So with that, I don't see any more questions in the chat. I just have a few slides um, left and a few important reminders. So um, just some important dates coming up. Our first open house is this Friday. Um, so we have uh, University of Maryland admitted student open houses on March 10th, March 31st, and April 10th. Those are all on campus. 
um, and they're most of the day. You can register for them online. You can register on the Carillon website. Uh, we have a link to that registration page for you all. And then there's also one on April 21st that is virtual if you cannot come uh, in person to campus. And then May 1st is an important deadline to remember because you need to confirm your enrollment to University of Maryland. And then additionally, that same day is the deadline to submit your housing and dining agreement. So those are some really important things to note that are coming up. And then lastly, uh, we understand that you're all making a really big decision, um, choosing Maryland, potentially choosing Carillon as well. Um, and so we are happy to connect with you. Our email is carillon at umd.edu. We will get back to you as soon as we can. You're also free to call us on the phone if you have any questions. And please, please uh, follow us on social media. We are on Instagram and Facebook. Not only will we advertise and remind you all of um, admitted student open houses and other admission events, but you'll also get to see what is going on with our current students. Um, and that way you can already start to be part of the community and get a nice sneak peek. And with that, um, does anyone have any general questions? Our Q&A is still open. I just wanted to get in some of those important points and make sure we did not run out of time. Jillian, I, I would like to add one thing, which um, I noticed I found out when pretty much when I had kids who were in, in school and I asked the um, students, what they wanted to get out of their experience with Carolina and with UMD. And one of the answers that we got was um, that they wanted to basically have a community of people they could work with and know for a long time. And I, I saw that develop. I've seen that develop each time I've taught Carolina. Um, I've also seen the Carillon students continue to interact. I run into them across campus years after teaching the course. And, um, and I think really having the, the community um, is one of the big benefits here. Um, I think you learn the skills in the courses, but you really get something special that um, then you can carry through through your experience. Uh, and if I can add on that, um, speaking from like personal experience, I commute to school. So uh, when I first joined UMD, it was kind of very tough on me. It took me a while to kind of get adjusted to my surroundings. But I can definitely say that being in Carillon helped me feel more comfortable um, at UMD because it gave me that sense of community that I was kind of feeling that I was lacking once I transitioned from high school to here. So definitely being able to see the same people because you will see them like in, even in my other undergrad classes, um, being able to see them and kind of be with the same group of people. Um, I still see some of my Carolyn classmates in some of my other classes right now, even in my second semester. So just kind of being able to see them and just know some of the same people definitely helps build a greater sense of community. All right. And with that, I just want to thank you all for coming um, and spending some time with us. Uh, please do send us an email or give us a call if you have any other questions. Uh, good luck. This is a really exciting time and I hope everyone has a great night.